Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Elder Michael Stibick with Higher Ground Temple at 203 Vine Street in Camden, New Jersey, uh, where I serve underneath Bishop E. M. Barron and am glad to do so. Amen. I am grateful. I am glad. I am happy um, that uh, that that things are going well in the church. Amen. Um, that I see God's people growing, um, and I am happy to be there. Amen. And I'm happy to be here this morning. Amen. On I know. I'm royalty. I already see Kathy Hope coming on. I see Tanga Smith coming on. It is a blessing to see you out there this morning. I'm up early and ready to go. Gail Jernigan's coming on. Man, the saints are up early this morning um, and seeking God's face. And that is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Amen. Um, it's good when we wake up in the morning knowing that we need a little bit of God's word to see us through the day. That we need a little bit of God's word. Amen. To bring us through. I see Morgana Cohn coming on this morning. Um, it's, it's almost like I got some grateful saints out there this morning. Some folks that woke up this morning just thankful for something. That's right. You don't have to wait till tomorrow to be thankful for something. Uh, we should be thankful to God every morning when we wake up. My lovely wife coming on. Um, it is a blessing. It is a blessing. It is a blessing to see the folks out there this morning. Um, and we are continuing on in our series, our series to trust in God. Amen. Um, we put our trust in a lot of things. Amen. And there are a lot of people people that I know I can trust. I know I can trust my wife. I know I can trust my parents. Amen. I know I can trust Bishop Barron. I even know I can trust the folks that I see on the line here. I know I can trust Tanga and Gail and Morgana. And I know I can trust Kathy Hoke. Amen. But the thing is, I can't trust in them the way that I can trust in God. Um, because as much as they may love me, as much as they may want what's good for me, as much as they want what's right for me, they just don't know everything. So they can't always do right by me. But I say trust in God. You put all your eggs in that basket. Amen. If, if, if it ever comes down, amen, to what God says and what somebody else says, 100% of the time, you trust in what God says. Because the thing is, as much as they love you, as cute as they might be, as sweet as they might be, they just don't know enough, amen, to do right by you all the time. So we're talking about just trusting in God, not trusting in yourself, not trusting in the job, not trusting in the children not trusting in the money in the bank, not trusting in that car even to start in the morning, but knowing that only God, amen, can take care of all these things, amen. And, and I see a Gail journey, and, and I am grateful for you too, grateful for you and your whole family, amen. You can see... I love it in certain families, amen, where just generation after generation, you got you got folks that love God, amen, to, to, to know, amen, that's our goal, amen, to start at home, amen, and to bring along those, amen, in the next generation, um, not always easy, amen, I know I know I, I struggle through it, I fight through it myself, amen, but if we keep on pressing, we keep on trusting in God, and let them see us bringing, God bringing us through time after time, amen, then, then we know that we will come out the other side, and we know that as God God promises, amen, that our future generations, amen, the ones, our seed, amen, are going to come to them, that our seed is going to be saved, amen. So we thank God, we thank God, and we've been looking at this series, Trust in God, amen. And we've looked at a couple of things so far. We've looked at, at when the heat is on, trust in God, and we looked at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego being thrown into the fiery furnace, amen, and that enemy came against them, that enemy was pressuring them to leave behind the things of God, and they're putting the heat on them to leave behind the things of God and worship and worship a statue. Amen. Just like the world just tries to press on us to worship a job. Just like the world tries to press on us to worship celebrity. Just like the world tries to push on us. Amen. To worship, to worship money in the bank and possessions. Amen. They had some fire too and yet they trusted in God and he brought them through. Um, and then we went on and we looked at, we looked at when you don't see a way out. When, when, when it looks like the enemy's got you boxed in. Um, when you got one enemy at your back, but uh, keeping you from going on, amen, and you got another enemy in front of you that's coming to try and wipe you out, amen, and you don't see a way out, you trust in God, and we looked at those Israelites by the Red Sea, amen, and how God had actually put them in that position, God had directed them to that position where they were boxed in, why, so that God, amen, could get the glory, and we saw how being in that position for those Israelites, 40 years later, amen, the very fact that it had happened caused their enemies' hearts to melt, because God had displayed his power, and 
and bring in the mouth. So we learn when, when you don't see a way out, trust in God. And then, and then on Saturday, we looked at when you are weak. We looked at that man, uh, that man, Samson, how, how he had, he had defeated many Philistines. Amen. But yet when he was at his weakest, when they had shaved his head, when they had plucked out his eyes and he couldn't see anymore, that's when he had his greatest victory. That's when he took out the most of the enemy. Amen. Why? Because he trusted in God when he was weak. He prayed. The hair started to grow back and he prayed, God, one more time, give me the strength. And he had the power and he, and he, and he killed more Philistines that day. Amen. That in his whole life, why was he trusted in God when he was weak? Amen. And so we've looked at a whole bunch of things so far to trust in God as enemies come up against us. We've looked at a lot of things on how to defeat enemies. Amen. The external enemies, how we've learned to defeat those that are coming against us by trusting in God. And today, we're going to take a little look at how do we defeat that internal enemy, amen, when, when, it, when we trust in God. But we see these other things, we've looked at a lot of things here where it's the external enemy that's getting to them, that's getting to us, amen. But this is the thing, sometimes we can be an enemy to ourselves, amen. And a lot of times when, when we get tired, when we get worn out, amen, when, when we get to the point where we think we can't go on any further, a lot of times it's because we do it to ourselves. A lot of times when we're tired um it's because it's because we think that nobody else can do it we think boy if i'm not running the kids everywhere then then they're gonna grow up amen they're just they're gonna have no future if i don't make sure they get in every activity and if i don't make sure that they're constantly busy they're gonna then something bad is gonna happen to them amen but that's not the case and so we run ourselves ragged running the kids around and sometimes it's that internal enemy we start thinking to ourselves man if i don't if i don't work 60 hours this week if i don't work 70 hours this week then the bills aren't going to get paid. And so what do we do? We wear ourselves out running around, trying to do everything because we, sometimes we can be our own worst enemy. Sometimes in ministry, we think, man, if, if I don't get on that wall 24 hours a day, all these people are going to hell. Like we're the only one that can possibly save them. If we're not out there doing it, amen, then, then boy, these people have no hope when really we, we, we can plant and we can water, but really God's the only one that it's going to save them anyway. So I want to address today this when you're tired, trust in God, because we got to get out of this mentality where we're the only ones that can do anything. Amen. That we're the only ones. Like if we're not on the wall, if we're not running hundred miles an hour with our hair on fire, the whole world's just going to fall apart. We got to trust in God. Amen. And let him do his work. So when you're tired, when you're worn out, when you can't do anymore, before the burnout sets in, we've got to learn to slow down our pace. We've got to stop trying to do everything ourselves. we got to stop trying to please everybody that's out there. Amen. Because you know what? No matter how hard you try, as you're pleasing one person, you're you're already making another person angry. Amen. So, so stop trying to please everybody. When you're thinking you're the only one that can save them and you're the only one that can help them, and boy, if you if you're not running them around, they're just not going to have any way of getting by. Amen. If you don't take care of yourself, what's going to happen? See, this is the thing. This is the mentality we get into. Amen. And it comes from. And this is the thing. Is that the mentality comes from a good place? Often, it comes from a place of wanting to help people. It comes from a place of wanting everybody else to do better. But this is the thing. If you don't take care of yourself eventually you're not going to be any good to anybody. And I'm, I'm looking at the names on here and this message, amen, is for the right people. Cause I see some folks out there, amen, that are pushing yourselves all the time to do for somebody else. But we got to learn that if we don't sit down every once in a while, if we don't do a little bit of self care, amen, if we don't just spend some quiet time with God and let everybody else deal with their own issues for a little bit, then what's going to happen is we're eventually going to be no good to anybody. Cause we're just going to have nothing thing left in us. And we're going to be coming today from the book of first Kings chapter 19. And we're looking at a mighty, mighty man of God here. We're looking at that great prophet, Elijah. Amen. The powerful prophet. I mean, this, this man had power. This man himself, amen, defeated 400 prophets of Baal all on his own. There, He had 400 on one side and you, and you had just Elijah on the other side. Amen. And yet he defeated them. We're talking see, so don't think, Amen. See, sometimes we think tired is a sign of weakness. We think there must be something wrong with us if we're getting tired, if we can't push through. But even Elijah, this great prophet of the Lord, amen, this one that displayed the Lord's power on many occasions, even he got 
tired. Amen. So after, and, and we're picking up, he is actually, when we're picking up this story, he is actually just defeated. Amen. The 400 prophets of Baal. He has just put on this great display of God's power. Amen. But yet we see that even in the power that God has given him, he can still get tired too. And we're going to look at some of the things, even some of the mentality, some of the mindsets that can set in when we allow ourselves to get too tired. Amen. And so here, we're picking up now. He has just defeated him in the 400 prophets of Baal. And here's where we're picking up in chap, in verse one of chapter 19 of first kingdom. It says, now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and he had how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a message, messenger to Elijah saying, may the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely. If by this time tomorrow, I do not make your life like one of them. Amen. Threatening amen now to, to, to kill Elijah. Elijah, because she has heard about the power that he possesses, the threat that he is to everything that she stands for. Amen. Um, so a lot of times, see, this is where a lot of times the fatigue sets in, where, where you've just got done fighting the fight, where you've just got done accomplishing that thing. Amen. And already something else has rised up on you. Because it's almost, it's almost like if you ran a marathon and you paced yourself to, to finish that 26 miles and you're feeling pretty good at the end of that race. Amen. But then what happens? You finish the race and imagine they go, okay, now there's another one to run. You were thinking you were, you say, well, I was going to run another marathon, but you were thinking you were going to do it, you know, three months down the line, you were going to rest, recover a little bit, start training again, and then pick up the next marathon. But sometimes it doesn't work out that way. Sometimes you, sometimes you pour yourself out completely. Amen. Thinking you're going to have some time to recover afterwards. And then doesn't it happen? Where all of a sudden, as soon as you put everything into solving that issue, the next issue has popped up the very next day. That time you thought you were going to have to rest and recover, it just doesn't come sometimes. And it can lead to fatigue. It can lead to weariness. It can lead to us feeling just completely worn out. And so it says in verse 3, Elijah was afraid excuse me, and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba and Judah, he left his servant there while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. I'm telling you, doesn't it work that some that way sometimes? Where, where sometimes you just, what this is one of the things fatigue will do to you. Fatigue will be like, I just want to leave it all behind. I just, you know what? I just, I'm going to leave all the kids for amen about a year, a year and a half, and I'm going to go to a tropical island somewhere and I'm just, and I'm just going to get leave it all behind. You know what? I've done everything I can. I can't do anymore. And sometimes you just want to run off, amen, and leave it all behind and forget about it. And we don't want to get to that point where we put so much energy into things and we don't see a change in them that eventually we just end up giving up on them. Amen. So we got to make sure that we take those little rests. Amen. Throughout our time. Amen. So that we don't get so tired that we just want to leave it all behind. And so then, so Elijah has gone off into the wilderness. He came to a broom bush sat down under it and prayed that he might die. Amen. He just wanted to give up, leave it all behind, say, you know what? I've had it. I've had enough, Lord. He said, take my life. I am no better than to my ancestors. And this is one of the things I see here. Fatigue. This is one of the dangers of fatigue. This is one of the dangers of letting yourself get so tired. Amen. Is that it can make you question your worth. Because what happens? You get fatigued. You're like, you got, you feel like you got nothing left and the job is still not done. And it can lead you. Amen. When you got nothing left to say, I've given everything I can and it's still not done. I must not be worth anything. I must not be better than anybody else. Amen. I must not be capable of anything because I've done on everything I can. I've left nothing in the tank and that job is still undone. So if we let that fatigue get so far, if we let that burnout get so far, we can say, how can it be that I have nothing left and, and yet the job is still not done? And you know what happens in that now we're questioning our worth. Amen. And we can't let that happen. Amen. Because God loves us too much. The one good thing is that God always sees our worth. Amen. So, you know, he says, you know what? I just can't take it anymore. But this is the good thing. Then he lay down under the bush and he fell asleep. And all at once an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. He looked around and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. So once he took that time, we see 
once he took that time to rest, once he lay down under that bush and he fell asleep, now he allowed God the opportunity because he wasn't trying to do everything himself. He allowed God the opportunity to step in and to provide for him. He, he wasn't doing, he wasn't, he wasn't thinking about how he was going to eat. He wasn't thinking about what he was going to drink. Yet God provided the food and the drink that would restore him and renew him and rejuvenate him. Amen. So then the angel of the Lord came back as he fell back asleep after he ate nice full belly. We know we got a nice full belly. We get a nice sleep off of that. And the angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, get up and eat for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank, strengthened by that food, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Mount Horeb, the mountain of God. There he went into a cave and spent the night. So see, this is the thing. Now he's had that opportunity. He was worn out. He was fatigued. He didn't think he could do anymore. But what did he do? He took a step back. He got some sleep. He allowed God to provide him the sustenance. He allowed God to rejuvenate him. Amen. And now what happens? Now that he has done that, now that he has taken the break, now that he has done a little bit of self-care, now that he has said, you know what? I'm not going to do everything for a little while, and I'm going to let God take care of it. Amen. Now God has provided him a couple of good nights sleep. God has provided him some food. And now he can pick up the journey again. He slowed down. He got his rest. And now... He's ready to resume his journey. So he rested again. And now the thing is, now that he rested, he, he went on the journey. Amen. And, and he got to the, to the cave. Amen. And he, and he went in and he spent the night. So now, so what's happened? He's been rejuvenated. He's been restored. He allowed God to prepare some food for him. Then what did he do? Then he took the 40 day journey. And what's the first thing he did after the 40 day journey? Amen. He rested again as he spent the night in the cave. And, and now that he rested, now that he had taken his time to eat. He had taken his time to be restored. And now that he had l listened to God, trusted in God and went to the place that God sent him. Now what happened is not only is he rested, not only is he strengthened, but now he is ready to hear from the Lord. And it says, and the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? And then in verse 10, Elijah replies, I have been very zealous for the Lord God almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant torn down your altars and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left and now they're trying to kill me. Amen. And sometimes that fatigue will do it. Sometimes that fatigue will try and convince us that everybody is out to get us. And verse 11 goes on to say, the Lord said, go out and stand by the mountain in the presence of the Lord for the Lord is about to pass by. And then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. This mighty wind, this strong wind, this loud wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. The earth shook. Everything moved. It was powerful, and yet the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake came a fire. We know about fire. Fire has that power to destroy. It gives off a lot of heat. It gives off a lot of energy, but yet the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. Amen. And when Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. And then a voice said to him, what are you doing here? Elijah. Amen. So this is, and this is one of the dangers. Amen. When we get it in our mind, when we start thinking, I see you on there, Pastor Adams. Amen. God bless you, man of God. Um, it is a pleasure to have you on here this morning. We're learning. Amen. That sometimes we got to slow down a little bit. We got to do a little self care and we got to let God take care of those things that we try to convince ourselves we're the only ones can handle them. Amen. As we look at what happens with Elijah here, we, we see that the, the, that the voice of God was not screaming in the wind, that it wasn't in the power of the earthquake, that it wasn't in the energy of the fire, amen, but that when God's voice came, it came in a gentle whisper. And sometimes what happens is when we're running and we're running and we're doing and we're busy and we're chasing after the kids and we're chasing after the job and we're spending all our time, amen, trying to take care of the spouse, amen, and we don't ever slow down, it's very easy 
easy to miss that gentle whisper. If, if we don't get ourselves to a quiet place, if we don't get ourselves to a place of peace, amen, if we're not sitting still and just listening for the voice, amen, that gentle whisper can be very easy to miss. I, I remember... I remember even when I was playing sports, when I'd be playing soccer, or when I'd be, or when I'd be wrestling, my, uh, my father, <laughs> I love my father, because my father, he, he made it to, he didn't make it to every game, but if he wasn't working, he was at just about every, every event that I, that I participated in, and the thing is, I would be so, when I was so focused, amen, on the soccer game, when I was so focused on the wrestling match, amen, when I was focused on defeating that person that was in front of me in that wrestling match, I, my, 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 people would come up to me and say, did you hear your father out there today? Do you, he was shouting the whole time. He was, he was hollering at the ref. He got, ki- he got kicked out of the gym because he was hollering at the ref so much. And yet I wouldn't hear a thing that he said or a thing that went on. Amen. Why? Cause I was so focused on that task that I thought I had to accomplish. And that can happen in our lives. If we get so focused on that task in front of us, if we get so busy trying to do and we don't ever see sit down and just take quiet moments, then that voice of God, amen, if I didn't hear my father screaming at the top of his lungs, how am I going to hear the gentle whisper, amen, from God, because I'm so busy, so focused, so thinking that I've got to do everything, or it's not going to get done, then how am I ever going to hear, how am I ever going to know, how am I ever going to receive the instruction if I'm so busy trying to go about and do it all myself? And so, and so here now what happens? So God has asked him, Elijah, what are you doing here? And Elijah replies in verse 14, he says, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altar, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they're trying to kill me. Amen. And he goes on to say, when you're trying to, yes, when you're trying to do everything, what happens? We can often convince ourselves that we're the only one doing anything because we're so busy thinking about what we've got to do. We're so busy thinking. The focusing on what we've got to do that we don't even see that there's a whole host of people out there that are already doing that there's a whole host of people out there that are just waiting to help you but you're so busy doing you haven't thought boy maybe I ought to stop and look around you know what I see we're so busy trying to to save that 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 son amen that we don't look around and say you know what they, they got a friend that's saved and maybe we need to work together to save that son we're so busy trying to grow the church that we don't look around and say you know what there there's a whole bunch of people in this church that have gifts. Amen. And if we can just instead of me trying to do everything, if I can just lift them up, amen, and let them and let them help, amen, then, then that then that takes the load off of me, amen. And I can spend more time in my word. I can spend more time in prayer. Amen. So we got to stop, we got to stop being so busy all the time. Now we got to sit back, take a quiet moment, we got to listen for God, and we also got to look around, amen, and realize we're not alone. That there's a lot of people out there that, that are that are are trying to do the right thing as well. And then in verse 15, it says, the Lord said to him, um, go back the way you came and go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, anoint Hazael, king over Aram, also anoint Yehu, son of Nimshi, king over Israel, and anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, from Abel Mahaloa to succeed you as the prophet. Yehu will put to death any who escape the sword of Hazael, and Elisha will put to death any who escape the sword of Yehu. Yet I reserve 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed down to Baal, and whose mouths have not kissed him. So when you stop and listen... When you stop and listen for God, when you stop and listen to God, when you take that rest, amen, what happens is now you can realize that God has put help all around you and you didn't even know it. You didn't even know the amount of help that you had. Why? Because you were so busy thinking that you had to do everything yourself. But if we just sit back and we trust in God, amen, we're going to see, first of all, we, we, we're going to get rid of these defeatist mentalities. Because when we're well rested, now, now we can see the problem, amen, and now we can see our worth, we can see our ability, we can see these things. If we allow ourselves to get so worn out, so torn down, amen, that we got nothing left in the tank, then what happens? We start to question, amen, our worth. So we need that rest to do that. We need that rest 
rest. Amen. So that we can hear the voice of God so that when he speaks to us, we can hear him clearly because we can't follow his instruction if we can't hear his instruction. And if we're so busy trying to do all the time, if we're so busy running all the time, we're not going to hear it. And then I love this. So then, so then what happens now? God has given him this instruction and I love it because here's one thing we see that Elijah, one thing about Elijah, if you notice, he always listens when God has told him to go, when go, when God has told him to do, he has gone without hesitation, without delay. So Elijah went from there and found Elisha, Elijah found Elisha, son of Shaphat. He was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen and he himself was driving the 12th pair. Elijah went up to him and threw his cloak around him. Elisha, then Elisha, who was the one plowing, Elijah has found Elisha. Amen. He left his oxen and ran after Elijah. He said, let me kiss my father and mother goodbye and then I will come with you. So when we slow down, when we allow God to talk to us, then what happens is we can, we can find that help that he has for us. God, see the thing is, God has sent help for all of us already. Amen. But we're so busy running forward. We don't see that there's a whole bunch of help. Amen. They're running behind us trying to catch up. They're running behind us wanting to do. Amen. But we're so busy running and doing that we're not even giving them an opportunity to catch up and to help. So God, God has helped us trying to catch up to you, but what you gotta do, you gotta slow down. Okay. You've got to slow down, allow yourself to restore your energy, allow you to restore your strength, allow God to restore you, allow God to show you the value, allow God to speak to you, allow God to give you instruction on where you should go. Because if you're so busy running and not listening, amen, then you're running and being busy, but you're doing it in all the wrong places. You're doing it in all the wrong ways. You're thinking that you're the only one that can get it done. So, so, so I just want to encourage you today that when you're tired, if you're you're feeling worn out, if you're thinking, man, I've given everything I can, and yet it's still not done, slow down. Take a couple of deep breaths. Take a little bit of time. Get into your word. Get into your prayer closet. Just put on some worship music and praise God. And what will happen now, all, all those all those hurricanes, amen, that you hear blowing around, you're going to go away. All those, all those earthquakes that, that are shaking your world are going to go away. And, and all the fires, amen, that seem to be consuming everything around, you're going to go away. And there's going to be left just a tiny little whisper. And if you listen to that whisper, he's going to send you the help that you need, that you need not be tired anymore, that you need not be burned out or worn out. Amen. And I just want to close with a couple other quick scriptures because we got to get over on to the prayer line in just a few minutes. I'm not out of word. I actually have more, a whole bunch of scriptures, um, but I'm going to give you just two more real quick. Um, a couple of, cause I, you're all saying, well, why is he always teaching from the Old Testament? Well, cause the Old Testament is part of the Bible too, but don't worry. I'm going to give you a little New Testament now. Second Corinthians 16 says, therefore we do not lose heart though outwardly we are wasting away yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. No matter what it looks like. See, on the outside, it can look, it can look bad. On the outside, it can look beat up. On the outside, we can look worn out. Amen. But don't get tired. Amen. Of doing the right thing. Cause, cause inwardly, God is constantly restoring us. Jesus is that living water that's constantly bubbling up within us. Jesus is that living water that's constantly refreshing us. Jesus is that living water that's constantly rehydrating us. Um, so don't, so don't you worry about what it looks like on the outside. And I'm going to leave you with this one. Don't you ever get tired of doing the right thing. Don't you, don't you get so tired? This is one of those dangers of fatigue. You get tired and you start taking shortcuts. You start looking for the quick way around. You, you start chasing after that low frat, low hanging fruit. Amen. When that low hanging fruit might be bitter, we start looking for that easy way out. We start looking for, instead of looking for the right way, we start looking for the easy way when we get too tired. So I want to close with this. Galatians six and nine says, let us not become weary in doing good for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Amen. So, so you don't get weary in doing the right thing. You make sure, you make sure that you stay strong in the Lord. You make sure that you spend time listening to his word. You spend time in his word. You spend time in prayer so that you can hear his voice, that you don't get fit, fit to that mentality that you've got to do everything. Amen. But you do, but you take the time to listen to God. 
and let God direct your path. And before you know it, he's going to walk you right into that help that you need to get the job done. Amen. I am not out of word, but I am out of time. Thank God. Thank you, my lovely wife, for putting the uh, the prayer line up there. Um, we hope that everybody will join us on the prayer line in just about five minutes at 730. From 730 just till 745, let's move on to prayer, man. We got a little bit of word. We got a little bit of fuel in the tank. Now, let, now let's go talk to God. Amen. And thank him for how good he has been. God bless you all. You all have a blessed day. Make sure that you take some time to serve God today, but make sure that you take some time, amen, to just sit and listen to him as well. God bless you all. You have a blessed day. And remember that Jesus loves you, and so do I. God bless you, and have a great day.